Excellent, excellent. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. And yeah, welcome, Michelle, to uh, again, Nargiza. Um, welcome, welcome. And I'd love to be able to see you as well. We can't see you. We can't see your beautiful face. Um, Carol and Carol, what do you what do you do? Tell us a really bit quickly, high level about yourself. You guys all have really, really cool jobs, positions. What do you do, Anne Carol? Hello, everyone. Uh, well, I am the founder of RNE Ocean Community Conservation. It's, um, it has only five years, but we have accomplished a lot, I think. Um, the goals that I want is to be able to raise funds, <laughs> get a salary, <laughs> and keep doing what I love to do. Cool. Um, be more confident in being able to persuade, I guess, uh, persuade people um, to show them a better way so they can connect and interact with uh, the oceans in this case. And so we can protect and conserve uh, the species and the oceans. That's pretty much Beautiful. Excellent. Excellent. Protect, conserve. I love it. I love it. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, Michelle, Michelle, tell us about yourself. Long time no see from last night, by the way. Um, oh, I like, I like how Asma also had to build a strong professional network. And heck, that's, that's a great reason for being here. A great reason for being in the courses. Um, we are always building, like I said, sometimes with five, sometimes there's 35 people in these. And we do this every other week. And guys, again, come come get whatever you need. Come get whatever you want from from here. Um, again, this is not just the James show. It's it's what do you need, and then I'm going to teach tools, suggestions, and even give you feedback. Hey guys, is this a good idea for business? Is is that a good idea? Is it a bad idea? What do you think of this idea? What do you think of this 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 business name? This keyword, and then of course I will teach you different tools for this as well. Uh, I interrupted you, Michelle. Sorry, and please go ahead. No, no problem at all. So I'm Michelle. And really why I'm here is to learn more. Uh, I want to become a life coach. I already help people um, in aesthetics, but I love helping people, you know, more than just aesthetics on the outside, on the inside, you know, the whole body is not only from the outside, it is also on the inside and vice versa. You know, people don't feel well when they have acne scars all over their face. Fair, fair they point. feel ugly and then they put lots of makeup and then every day they spend time on putting on a mask, you know, just to feel good of what they already look like. So I try to help in that aspect. And I really, yeah, I, I, I really love helping people. So becoming a life coach was like, you know, for me, a good uh, next step to add to my chapters Beautiful. and yeah. Beautiful. Amazing. Amazing. Welcome. 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 Uh, by the way, if anyone has any questions on my course, um, Michelle and Carol are currently in the course. So if you have any questions, totally cool. If you want to ask uh, advice, questions, concerns, am I any good? <laughs> what are you learning? Whatever you want, uh, you know, feel free as well. Cause I know Asma's boyfriend was looking and interested and now I'm already, you were curious too. So again, if, if you'd like, it's definitely an environment too. I'm sure and Carol and Michelle can tell you some of the things they've learned so far in the few weeks they've been in it. Again, just putting it out there as well. Um, cool. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Marty, Marty, last but not least. Uh, hey, everybody. Marty Sugis. I am from Las Vegas. <clears throat> I am on a personal development mission this year. So uh, I've come a long way. I've set some big goals and uh, I'm working working toward them. So I am now working with recently divorced men. I'm helping them transition from their married life to their newfound single life and shortening the time, the recovery time, if you will. When I, when I divorced years ago, it was a, a major struggle. I turned to alcohol. Um, it was ugly and uh, I don't, uh, I want to help some men prevent that situation from unfolding. Thank you. Cool. I love it. And that is certainly needed. That's for sure. A lot of men turn to booze. Absolutely. Absolutely. Or drugs or whatever it is. But yeah, absolutely. That's a that's a that's an amazing mission, brother. That's an amazing. And there's so many people out that need you. Oh my God, is there ever people that need you? Um you'll be you'll be uh, you'll be effective in New Year as well because most people stay together for Christmas, so they're not alone for Christmas. 
and then Jan, Feb, mm-hmm. March. So, so you know, and, and I'm happy to chat with you about this too. Let's talk about it. Happy to give you some ideas on on jump starting on marketing, uh, on putting the word out there, uh, starting some social media stuff as well. Get the word out there now is is my suggestion, and get excited about hey, I'm gonna be doing this in the future. This is what I'm doing now. This is what I want to help people with, and that way, when things happen, and they will, Jan, Feb, March. As people are sick and tired to be cooped up with people, either usually Feb, March, the winter blahs and cooped up with someone they don't like anymore, divorces, or again, January, a lot of divorces happen because, okay, Christmas is over. I didn't want to be alone on Christmas. See ya. <laughs> I can go find someone else. So yeah, you are you're, you have a very, very, very um, uh, great potential time to help a lot of men, Marvin, help a lot of people and, and all you guys too uh, with New Year's, New Year's resolution time as well. Um, amazing. Thank you and welcome, Marty. Um, but just before we go to Aliza, uh, tell us what, what is your own business you want to have asthma out of, out of curiosity? You're on mute, by the way, I'm trying to lip read, but I'm only so, so at it. Yeah. What is your, what's your business asthma? Uh, tutoring. It was, uh, so, sorry, I was muted, uh, but I was thinking about the tutoring going out cool. of the urban schools. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Absolutely. And I mean, tutoring is very effective now that most things are on Zoom. I had an ex-girlfriend was a teacher. She had to drive there or take the bus there, which was an hour. Tutor for an hour at whatever, $40 an hour, 50 bucks an hour, and then drive home. That's three hours. That's only, you know, $15, $20 an hour if you charge 60 bucks. That's only so Zoom is great. You can be on off with people. You can share screens and stuff. Everything is on computer now with kids anyways. So I mean, it's it's a great way, and you could still coach in person too, and then tutor in person rather. But again, um, the world has moved to virtual, which is great, and you don't have to drive around unless people come to you. But uh, I love that. Have your own tutoring, bros. Tutoring, very cool, very cool. And Aliza, Aliza, you want to really quick introduce yourself? Welcome back again. Welcome back, Aliza. Can you hear Sorry. us, Aliza? Yeah, I. Welcome. Yeah, I just have to. Uh... I have a tea shop in Vancouver, and then I just want to join you guys and learn more. And then, yes, I want to have a better business and so, yeah. Excellent. Okay, better degree mm. business. Okay, got it. Got it. Uh, Elisa has a really cool tea business, actually, out in Vancouver. Cool. And I, I've invited her to start uh, date nights, networking nights, uh, uh, paint nights, etc., at the tea shop as well. Um, even a tea, edu- a tea education night. Uh, I think tea, I, I always had fun. So people love having fun. Uh, a tea education and fun night as well. Um, but yeah, uh, we will, uh, we will, we'll talk about that too, Elisa. Um, so guys, excellent, excellent. Um, what I thought I'd start out with. Uh, if you guys need anything, was asking what you guys need, what you guys would like to hear about today. Um, my my agenda, my my loose agenda for today was going to be doing a, a non-sleep deep rest, about 10, 12 minutes with you. It's called non-sleep deep rest, NSDR, otherwise known as yoga nidra. And it's a, it's a really, really kick-ass um, uh, practice, 10, 12 minutes. And you can do this to get a bit of rest during the day. If you need a break, you need to power yourself up. It can be used for uh, if you want to go to bed and get some good sleep at night, just bringing you down, 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 down. Or even when you wake up in the morning, if you're not quite refreshed, this happens to me a lot, I wake up and not quite refreshed, I will do this 10 minutes, non-sleep deep rest yoga nidra, and it will help you feel more refreshed. It'll kind of put you into a deep rest, but not a sleep uh, in the morning. So you can use it anytime I was going to do that. I was going to, because there's a lot of anxiety and uncertainty in the world, I was going to teach you a really powerful anti-anxiety tool. You can, yes, nuke anxiety, specific anxiety in about four minutes, maybe even three. So we're going to do that today as well. Um, but again, it really depends what you guys want and and what you guys need, what questions you have. Um, got a few other things too we're going to look at as well. Maybe we can practice the reverse spin for any negative feelings anyone's having. Um, we can talk about copy test, how to listen powerfully. In fact, why don't we do that real quick? Uh, why don't we do that real quick? And then I'll break it up a bit with the, the yoga nidra non-sleep deep rest meditation. So copy test 
is something that'll take your communication to a whole new level. And Carol and Michelle, we talked a bit about this in the course, so this is a great review for you. So if someone says something to us, again, ask them as a teacher, Marty as a coach, you know, of course, Carol, Michelle, if someone says something to us as a coach, a mentor, anything, uh, listen, a friend, and if we repeat it in our words, in our language, because of how our brains work and how we have our words, our buzzwords, they have their words, their buzzwords, uh, their mental filters in their mind that, that filter things that come in from here and here and here and here and even touch. They filter things that come in. And so we may filter their words and we may repeat something. So asthma, what I think I, you know, you, you said this and this and this. And asthma's thinking, well, no, not exactly. Or, well, yeah, kind of. Or no, not at all. So what the key thing to remember, guys, you want to repeat what people said almost verbatim, almost exactly. You don't have to sound like a parrot, but literally almost exactly. Use their keywords. Use their buzzwords. If they use a bit of profanity, you have permission to use profanity too, because that's what will resonate with some people. Uh, if someone says, I'm sick of this damn whatever, then you, again, you have permission to use that word. And that word will actually resonate with them. We have something in our brains called a reticular activating system or RAS. We actually talked about this last night in the course. And it is your, your spotlight. It's your spotlight. It's your pay attention system. It's also your wake and sleep system. But for now, it's, we'll, we'll talk about how it's your spotlight. If we paid attention to everything in the world, you'd be totally overwhelmed. All the stuff coming in, your heartbeat, sound of your lungs breathing, the fan of your computer, uh, the, the fan of the heater, things, noises in the other room, uh, the, the Dell sign on my monitor, the Samsung sign on my thing, the blue microphone. You guys can't see it here, but my blue microphone right here. It would be completely overwhelming if we paid attention to everything at once. It was like when Superman came to Earth. He's like, ah, because he just, everything was going and he could pay attention and see and hear everything. So we have our reticular activating system, RAS, that filters things out. And it pays attention. Listen, listen. It pays attention to what we're looking for. Your eyes will see what your brain is looking for. You guys have probably heard that expression before, which is why often if we have limiting beliefs or programming about why we can or can't or should or shouldn't or have to or must or this is a good girl or a bad boy does this or a good girl only does this or a bad whatever only does this, all this stuff in programming, that programs that that searchlight, if you will, to go out and, and, and spotlight and only illuminate certain things. So we only see a fraction. We only experience a fraction of our lives. Now we can change that. We can adjust that and tune that spotlight or that search system, that fine search system. Uh, we can do that a number of ways. Uh, visualizations and affirmations work to do it well. We can also do that with um, a bit of sleep state self-hypnosis just before you go to bed or just after you wake up. You can literally record a one or two, three minute thing on your phone. I have it as my alarm in the morning and my go to bed alarm at night. It just starts, my voice starts talking to me uh, about the things I want, what I deserve, why I deserve it, who I want to be. Uh, this is my purpose in life, who I want to help the hell in their lives without me, and the heaven when they work with me. And so my brain is hearing that at two very, very important times, just after you wake up, just before you go to bed, because your brain waves are in a similar state that uh, is hypnosis. You're literally in a hypnotic state, automatically your brain waves. So it's called sleep state programming. But back to my central point about, again, what, what goes in, pay attention system, we can program this, in fact, it's been programmed all our lives by teachers, culture, society, religion, parents, grandparents. You have to do this. You can't do this. You're a bad boy or you're so clumsy. All the crap our parents said to us, especially when they were yelling and mad. That goes in and that stuck like glue to us. So again, our beliefs, uh, our experience in the past will pre-program this, this searchlight, this spotlight, and it only searches for what we're looking for or what's congruent with our beliefs. Like you could do this or you could do that. Or all of this people are bad, or this religion is bad, or prejudices, what we have been programmed, or money is this, you know, wealth is this, business is this, government is this. We're literally searching for things to confirm what we already know. And your brain, this RAS, automatically discards, throws out, deletes things that are not congruent with our beliefs. 
so we can change our beliefs with some powerful tools. Thus, we change what the spotlight or searchlight is looking for. We change what it lets in. You can also program it with when you buy things. Let's say you buy a shirt or a purse or a car or a phone. Wow, look at all the people out there. They, I just, I'm noticing all these people with the same car or the same uh, microphone, Marty, or the same uh, shirt or whatever. The same purse, the same phone, the same watch. Wow. It's because we, we make a commitment, we buy something, and that programs our brain, okay, this is good, this is for us. So all of a sudden, you start noticing people with the same phone or watch or whatever. It's kind of cool. Watch out for that phenomenon in the future. So again, we can, all, we can program our brain positively and negatively for, to automatically get us what we want, or unfortunately, most of us to automatically go and get what we don't want, limit us, limit our confidence, limit our reach, limit our action taking. And that's why I love teaching some of these tools to great coaches and people that want to teach and help people. They will literally transform lives because people are looking for different things. You, you change people, move these limiting beliefs, and people literally go out there and they're looking, their brain is looking for different things. They're looking for confirmations now and why they're awesome or smart or worthy or lovable or whatever. They're good enough. They're not a failure. They're looking for these things versus looking for and confirming all the evidence for why they're crap or they're not dumb or whatever it is, right? I had a math teacher years ago. I wasn't very good at math. And she, I don't know, I was trying to get these math problems right. And she's like, I, James, I'm sick of you. Uh, it's You're wrong. It's all wrong. Every time you come up here, it, it's wrong. Go away, sit down. It's all going to be wrong. I'm not going to look anymore. And I'm like, holy crap, holy crap. I must be dumb. I must be bad at math. So I made those two decisions back then. And oh, that was affecting me for years because I was only, until I worked on it, I was only looking for a confirmation that I'm dumb, I'm bad at math. Now, it turns out that I, I'm a pretty resilient and persistent person. And so even though I was failing a lot of math, I went on to complete all four major high school maths and four university maths because I will not give up if it's something I want. That being said, it was hard as hell. Um, and I was able to change those beliefs about me and being good or bad and this or that from what that teacher had said to me. So again, anyways, changing the RAS, changing what gets let in, uh, changing the programming. It's like trying to run your supercomputer in your brain on Windows 95 or Windows 2000. It's, it's not going to work. Right? If it is, it's not going to work very well. This is a supercomputer. Most of us have old, broken programs. Some of them still work. Some programs still work because we're doing some things that work and some things that help us. But a lot of times, though, things are, are not working in our lives and again because the programming is outdated or how we've been programmed to think and believe is incorrect so anyways wanted to talk a bit about that and a bit about the ras pay attention system focusing on what you want and going for what you want as well uh so we'll talk a little bit about that and want to also any questions on this by the way guys any questions on this so far that makes sense clear as mud <laughs> Cool, cool. Excellent, excellent. Uh, so I'm just going to do my best to address some of your questions and your, your goals here as well. Uh, big goals, personal development, uh, short and covering time, and vi uh, vices, addictions. Yeah, I mean, vices, addictions, it's all just numbing the pain or filling the void that we have or that's been created by, again, a divorce, for example, um, or a failure or a death or that's been programmed into us for all, all of our life as well, right? So... That's one of the key things. Uh, let's do this, guys. Let's do something really interesting here. Um, communication. So we talked about copy check. And I'll, I'll talk a little more about communication. We talked about copy check. Again, going back to my original point, what happens is if your searchlight is only searching for certain words and I say, hey, I need a, a kick-ass tutor. I need a kick-ass life coach. And you say, well, I, I'm a very professional tutor. Uh, I have a lot of experience. I'm a very professional coach, a lot of experience. And if and and you say that back to me, my my searchlight isn't really searching for that. It's not really going to hear that effectively. And if 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 I if I had said again, I need a kick-ass uh, coach or kick-ass tutor that has uh, bulletproof accountability, and you don't say that back to me, especially you don't use my words, uh, it's going to almost fall on deaf ears. You'll hear someone say, "Uh huh, uh huh," but really, it doesn't go in deep. It doesn't go into the subconscious. It's just the five percent conscious mind you're talking to, right? It's just the five percent conscious mind you're talking to. So what do we do? We use copy test. So we say, you know, Asma, what I think I heard you say versus what I heard you say, because it could be wrong. 
What I think I heard you say, Marty, what I think I heard you say is that, you know, blank, I, I, and I'll do it now, is that, you know, you're on a personal development mission, Marty, setting big goals, uh, you're working towards them, and you really want to help recently divorced men who are transitioning, and you want to help shorten that recovery time and prevent, prevent the addictions and vices. And now the test, I say to Marty, and he's nodding, which is great. You want them not. I can say to Marty, hey, Marty, you know, zero out of 10, how did I do? How, how, how accurate did I get that? What do you think? That was uh, very accurate. I'd probably say 10. Perfect. Excellent. Excellent. Awesome. Awesome. And, and out of curiosity, Marty, did you, did you feel heard? Did I feel, you know, I was paying attention. I was with you present. And then I heard you. Yes. I just read a book called You're Not Listening. And uh, most of us don't listen very well. Thank you for listening. <laughs> you're very welcome. And you're absolutely correct as well. And, and there's a pro and con to that, that most people don't listen well. The, the, the pro is obviously most people don't listen well. The, the, pardon me, the con is most people don't listen well. The pro guys to this is that if you listen well, if Asma and Michelle and Carol and Marty and everyone else listens well, you will stand out amongst you know millions and billions of people. You will stand out when someone feels heard and seen and feels important and recognized and paid attention to. One of the ways to do it is the copy test. Repeat almost verbatim or verbatim if you want. And, and you don't have to just literally parrot everything they say back. What you can say is, you know, Marty, I really, this is important to me, Marty. And this asthma, this is you know, Michelle, Carol, I really want to make sure I got it because because you are important to me. This can this conversation is important. So what I think I heard you say was, and then blank. You don't just have to parrot like, you know, it's not ping pong. Asthma's like, I want to be a tutor. You want to be a tutor. I want to do this. You want, it, it doesn't have to be ping pong. Right. So you can pre-frame it a bit. This is important that I hear you, Asma. I'm really, really invested in your success. And so just to make sure I heard you correctly, what I think I heard you say was that you want to achieve more on your job. You want to have your own tutoring business, Asma, and that you want to build a strong professional network. How did I do? Uh out of 10. You know, did I get a little bit, a lot, most of it? How did I do out of 10, Asma? Absolutely all of it. Okay. Excellent. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And believe it or not, I didn't used to be a very good listener many years ago. It's something I've worked on a lot and learned so much now I can teach others. So copy test. Uh, and you'll you'll impress people. You'll also hear them so you can help them better. Uh, you'll impress them. They'll feel heard. They'll feel seen. And wow, talk about building rapport quickly with someone too. Because wow, they're actually listening. They're actually paying attention. The other thing is to make sure to shut down any of the other stuff or the noise or the voices in your head. One way of doing that is literally stop it or shut up to all the stuff, all the noise and the worries in your head. Oh, I got to do this in the laundry later. I hope this person shuts up and buys for me. Uh, whatever. I hope they buy my thing. Uh, I got to do this for later. I, I got to go soon. I got to remember this. My husband wants me to do that for him or my wife needs this. Again, just shut that stuff down. Just, just shut up. Or stop it, especially if the voice is negative. Ah, uh, you know, you don't know what you're doing. Ah, uh, they don't like you. Or ah, uh, blah, blah, blah. Just stop that or shut up. And you are you need to be just a little more assertive than the drama in your head, the, the stuff in your head, right? Just be a little more. You don't have to scream at your head, but just stop it. There's a little more assertive than the voice in your head to doing that. So, so stop all that stuff in the head. Make them the most important person in the room. Make them the most important person in the room. Uh, and here's the secret, guys. If you're talking, like you're talking to people like now, and I'm, I'm talking in a group versus just one-on-one, -on -one, look at people. Like when I talk to Asma, I'm looking at her. Uh, when I'm talking to Michelle, I'm looking at Michelle, uh, Carol, Marty. I'm looking at you all when I'm talking to you. And even when I'm talking about the concepts, I am, again, on my Zoom. And trust me, it works. The energy, that vibe, it's called transference in psychology. It goes across. Like I'm talking to Marty now about this. I'm looking at Asma. Michelle, I'm checking in with you when we're talking about this and that. And Carol... And Carol, making sure to, I, I make sure and acknowledge you too. And people will literally feel that, even though it's on Zoom. Of course, if you're in person, it's like, hey, Bob, and this, and you're looking as you talk to people. The worst advice ever given for, for uh, if nervousness, if you're nervous or fearful when giving a speech, the people say, talk to the back wall. Look, look at the back wall and talk to the back wall. Talk about a boring, unengaging, talk and speech are you going to engage people talk in the back wall am i going to engage you guys by doing this having a conversation like this with you no <laughs> engage people whether it's on zoom or in person engage them and sure it's a little more uncomfortable 
I promise you it's a thousand times more effective. They'll resonate more. People will choose you more, buy from you more, whether it's your networking online, Asma, and everyone, whether it's your presenting online, teaching online. Um, I mean, Asma, you could do a cool, like like I do, like these every two weeks. You could do once a month, every two weeks, you could do talks on, on math and kids can come, parents can come. Hey guys, this is what we do. This is what I speak on. Uh, these are some concepts I talk about. Um, give some examples. You can even do a little bit of tutoring if someone has a question. The kids have a question. Hey, a question on this math, a question on that, whether it's math or whatever. I mean, you could do that, creating some great rapport and benefits. Marty, you too. Again, things people come out. Hey, guys, you know, I'm having this, having this every two weeks. I have an hour or 80 minutes or whatever. Uh, a session on, you know, session for people going through divorce, men going through divorce, whatever it is. Men fearful of divorce, men that have been divorced, whatever it is. And again, I think that would generate some great, great uh, buzz about you. Uh, the the energy out there in the world is incredible. And I, I've given things and, and even like in these channels and sometimes stuff will increase another way. I give more on these these talks. Since I gave these talks, business has increased for me. Uh, some through here, some people come here and like, wow, this is amazing. I love the way you talk, James. I love the stuff you talk about. Yeah, I want to work with you. Sometimes it's just through other channels. And, and, and this is why. Um, money, money comes in the money, money comes, money flows in the opposite direction of value. If you're giving value, your money flows to you. If of course you're getting value, money flows out of you. So that's why you can do these talks and, and you'll find that even things through other channels, sales, business through other channels comes in. So that's, that's one thing about copy test, uh, paying attention to people, checking in with them, making it about them, talk to people, not at people. If you're a little nervous, you're talking to people, we have a tool for that. The tool is called 478 Breathing. It is by far the best tool, and you'll hear my voice drop in a minute and, and slow down. It is by far the best tool I found for, for breathing and just being grounded and present with someone and, and really helping the nervousness. I'm also gonna teach you guys an anxiety tool in a few minutes. 478 is really just inhale. And you hold it. For seven, six, right with me, five, four, three, two, one, and slowly exhale over eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Here goes my voice. And it's much more deep, present resonance. We'll do one more. Let's do one more, guys. Ready? Inhale one, two, three. Hold that for seven, six, Five, four, three, two, one. Slowly exhale over eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. That's nice, eh? Use that before bed, anything. Um, it just, just grounds you, makes you relax, present if you have to do something that makes you anxious or do something that bothers you. Or if you just have to listen better, if you've got all kinds of stuff going on, guys, noise and worries in your head, do a bunch of the four, seven, three or four, five, four, seven, eight. It's usually all you need just present, grounded with them. Like Marty said, most people are not present. They're not listening. And this will separate you from the crowd and help you win, help more people, make a lot more money. These simple things, simple tools. Uh, any questions so far, guys? Questions so far? Anything comes up, just feel free to drop it in the chat. Let me teach you something for rapport. Uh, pardon me. Let me teach you something for rapport really quickly as well. I mentioned listening for rapport. The other thing for rapport when you're talking to someone in a group or one-on-one, -on -one, again, trust me, this works. You want to get trust from someone, have someone feel like they, they can trust you, they feel good. Say to them in your head, say to them in your head, you're safe, I've got your back. You can say that over and over. Trust me. You want an instant rapport builder? When you're like, I, I go up to walk and introduce myself to Marty or, or Asma or Michelle or Carol. It's like in my head, it's like, you're safe. I've got your back. Hey, nice to meet you. I'm James Elliott. Hi, I'm Marty. Cool. Or I'm, I'm Asma. Yeah, again, it, you're safe. I've got your back. And you can keep saying that too. You can say that during any times of escalation as well. You're safe. I've got your back. You're meeting someone. You're first sitting down, asking with a, a prospective student or client. You're tutoring them. Again, Marty, Michelle, Carol, your clients as well. You know, you're safe. I've got your back when you're meeting them. You're safe. I've got your back when they're explaining something. They'll feel, again, through transference, they'll feel safer. 
they'll trust you more, they'll open up more, they'll choose you more, and they'll open up to you so you can help them more. They'll open up on a deeper level to feel safer. So building instant rapport, listening, presence, copy check, you're safe, I've got your back. Sound good? Cool? Excellent, excellent. If anyone wants the recording, by the way, uh, I'm happy to give it to you, just let me know at the end. Okay, let's move on to something for anxiety. There's a lot of anxiety these days. And people, there's, there's uncertainty in the world, finances, jobs, you know, starting my business, growing my business, whatever it is. So here is a really cool anxiety hack. It works very well. It works very efficiently and very effectively. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to actually, I'm going to write it down just so it's easier for you guys before we go and do this cool meditation. Okay. And sit down and have a seat with you guys too. Okay. So anxiety hack. It's super simple. If you want to nuke anxiety, it's actually very, very, very simple. If you're anxious or nervous about something, uncertain, worried about something, uh, this works during the day. And it's also great if you can't sleep at night too. You need to sit up to do it. You can't do it lying down. It just doesn't work as well. Um, I would sit up. So this is an anxiety hack. So step one, what am I anxious about? What specifically? It doesn't work on all anxiety. It's something specific. That being said, you can use it more than once for each thing you're anxious about or nervous about, fearful, worried about. Fearful, worried, doubting, um, et cetera, et cetera, right? What specific? So step one. So on page, so let's see, okay, step one. Step two, what you do is we can take, uh, and I'll, I'll guide you through this in a minute. These are the steps. Basically, uh, you know, pretend you can fly or float. Uh, you have a jet pack, for example, uh, whatever, wings, whatever. And float, fly, high above now, Fly high above now and float out over high above that future event that you are anxious about. So we float up, we float over, you're safe, way over that event, that future event you're anxious about. Step three, visualize that future event completing successfully. Watch it. You can watch it completing successfully. Make sure it's completed successfully in your mind. Right? Watch completing success. Feel it completing successfully, etc. Whatever your dominant sensory is. Rep, you know, uh, feel it, hear it, watch it, whatever it is, completing successfully. Completing successfully. So visualize it. And then we have step four. What we do. We float, fly further out to the future. Uh, can be 15 minutes, can be 30 minutes, can be uh, an hour, three hours, etc. And then turn back and look back towards now from the future stay there and i'll say from the future turn back and look back towards now looking back past the successful completion of that event if you're complete if you're seeing it failure it, this is not going to work visualize it completing successfully okay this is going to work however it works and it could complete successfully you're mentoring, you're coaching, you have your business set up, you're making money, you're paying off bills, you're, you know, your credit card debt is zero, whatever it is. You have 20K in your bank account. Uh, you've had the tough talk with the person, you've grown, your business has started and whatever it is. Whatever it is, just visualize the successful completion of that event. Your business is up and running, you're coaching people, whatever it is, guys. You know, ask yourself, 
is the anxiety gone? If so, uh, fly, float back to now and come back in the room. Open your eyes. Uh, if not, um, again, make sure you have visualized it completing successfully and float further out into the future. Keep going out an hour, three hours, etc. You Usually most people only need 15 to 30 minutes. Uh, you, most people only need 15 to 30 minutes, <clears throat> honestly. Uh, if you need an hour or three hours, and like, what are you doing? Okay, I'm at home or I'm chilling, whatever. Just visualize what you're doing after that. Right? Looking back, uh, float in the future, looking back. So you turn and you look back towards now, looking back past the successful completion of that event. Okay, looking way, way, way back towards now. I've seen, oh, cool, that's done. That's over, that's successful, I'm good. Uh, again, if the anxiety is not gone, uh, float. Um, if not, Make sure you visualize it completing successfully is the key and float further out in the future. Five B now is the anxiety gone. If not, repeat step five. Right, again, float further, make sure it's completing successfully, etc. cetera. Uh, and then stick, step six. There you go. It's, it's five, six steps, very easy. I'll, I'll walk you through this, guys. Anything you're anxious about, nervous about, worried about, uncertain about, it works very, very effectively, very quickly. Um, again, just float up high, uh, you know, jetpack, float high above now, uh, and float out to the future. Float out to wherever your future is. It, it's relevant wherever your future is. All right. Uh, and yeah, look forward to now along the timeline of your life. You look back along the timeline of your life. You know, from the past, to, you know, uh, past, present, future, just turn and look back towards now, uh, looking past the successful completion of the event. And is anxiety gone? Any questions before we do this? Uh, Carol, Marty, Asma, or Michelle? All right. Guys, pick something you're, you're nervous about, anxious about, whether it's big or small. A future event, maybe it's starting your business, growing your business, maybe it's having a tough talk with someone, whatever it is, guys, whatever it is you need to do. Pick something. Everyone have something that you know either makes them anxious or something bugging them right now, something that are uncertain about, an uncertainty of the future, uh, uncertainty about maybe starting your business, doing some marketing, making money, paying off bills, paying off debt, whatever it is. It could be anything at all, guys. Everyone have something? Just give me a quick thumbs up, guys. Everyone has something they can use? Cool. Excellent. Excellent. Awesome. Okay, cool. All right, guys. I'd invite you to close your eyes, please. It doesn't take long at all. Close your eyes. And again, pretend you can fly. You're super safe. You are safe. You can fly or float or whatever you need. Pretend you have a, a jet pack or wings or whatever you want. However you do this is perfect. And float or fly above now. Float high above really now. And, and looking down... You can, you can really see almost the, the, the events of your life all the way back from in the past, all the way up to the future. And you can see it's almost like a, it's like a line. However your line looks is perfect, whether it's up or down or sideways. But just notice notice which, which direction your past is, which direction your future is. And it's not your conscious concept I'm interested in. It's your unconscious. So if you were to know, I'd like you to float out to the direction of your future, wherever your future is spatially. Just float out. In your mind's eye, float out your future. And again, you can do this visually, uh, auditorily as sounds floating on the wind or or you know physically, kinesthetically, like floating in a bathtub. However you float is perfect. It doesn't have to be only visual. And then what I'd like you to do is float out, float over the time, float to the future, high, high above that time, nice and high above the time, because you're high in the sky, and just look down about that situation, that event, that future thing, you're nervous, uncertain, anxious, worried about. And I'd like you to visualize that future event completing successfully. You know, did it go perfect? Maybe, maybe not, but at least it completed successfully. You, you got what you wanted, the business is up and running, the marketing is going, you, you paid off the bills, you're debt-free, whatever it is, you're debt-free, the business has started, 
your business is up and running, you have clients, people are paying you money, you're, you're, you're mentoring people, you're coaching people, you're, um, you're uh, tutoring people. Just notice this. Notice that it's happening. It's happening. And, and, and notice the successful completion of that event. Like, okay, I, I am tutoring people. I, I have money. I am doing this. The business is rocking and rolling. The startup was complete. I started the business. It all went well. Maybe it didn't go perfect. I don't know. But it went well. It completed successfully. It, it, it's done. It's done. It's over with. It completed successfully. Again, just notice and visualize the successful completion of the event that you thought you were anxious or nervous, worried or fearful about. Now, what I'd like you to do is to float or fly further out to the future and just use your intuition. It could be 15 minutes past the successful completion of the event. You can float out uh, high above now, float out to your future 30 minutes, whatever you want. Float out 30 minutes further into the future. And staying there in the future, turn and look back towards now, staying out in the future, look back towards now, look back past the successful completion of the event. You're looking back past the success of looking back at now, looking back towards now, looking back and noticing and looking back past the successful completion of that event. The event's completing successfully. You're further in the future. You're, you're past the future, past the successful completion of that event. And you're looking back towards now, you're looking back past the successful completion event all the way back to now and just noting, noticing the successful completion of the event as you look back toward now. And ask yourself, is the anxiety gone? If so, great. great. If so, great. Go back to now and come back in the room and open your eyes. If it's not totally gone, make sure you visualize it completely successfully. It doesn't have to complete perfectly. Just make sure you have visualized it completing successfully, whatever that means to you. The business is up. You have an income. You have money in your credit card, part money in your bank account. Your credit card's at zero. Uh, you had a tough talk. You had the event. You had the discussion. You did the thing you need to do, whatever it is. You know, the person is okay. The person's healthy. You're healthy, whatever it is. Because again, make sure if the anxiety isn't gone, make sure you're visualizing the successful completion. And, and float a bit further out the future. Maybe float an hour or two out into the future. And this is only if the anxiety is, wasn't gone. Float a little further out in the future. And turn and look back towards now from the future, staying there in the future, floating high above your, your timeline, above your life. And again, turn and look toward now, looking back towards now, past the successful completion of that event. And ask yourself, is the anxiety gone now? Is anxiety gone now? Good. And now, float back to now, come back into the room as long as anxiety is gone. If not, again, make sure it's visualizing successfully and float even further in the future. Um, if you guys want to just give me, I guess what, when you're done, if the anxiety is gone, just come back to now and open your eyes. If it's still there, uh, feel free to keep your eyes closed. I'll coach you through it. So if the asthma is good, Michelle's good. Marty, I can't see you, but let me know if you're good, brother. Uh, and Carol's good. Perfect. 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 Excellent. Excellent. How you doing, Marty? I can't see you, so I thought I'd acknowledge and ask. But you're on mute. <laughs> cool, cool. I'll check in with Marty uh, in a minute. Uh, and Carol, uh, what do you find? How'd that go? How'd it work? Mm, well, I choose something that is little, but for me, it's very scary. Mm -hmm. And because I have had rejections before mm -hmm. from it, um, it's hard to repeat it again. So it's about submitting a scientific article. And, um, and so let's just say that I had to do it twice because like the exercise, mm -hmm. because, um, after I did the first one, you submit it and yes, you feel fresh, like, okay, it is submitted. Now it's up to them. But then it's the other anxiety of, is it gonna, uh, they are gonna accept it or they're not gonna accept it. Or do oh, I have to make wow. more corrections or all this stuff? So then when you repeat it again, then I guess that I had to go further mm -hmm. until the time that they do 
to like they, they accept the paper and that I didn't have to do anything else and that is finally out there and that is done and yeah beautiful excellent nice work nice work and if, if you want you could combine them into hey it's the same same sort of series of events if you will of you submitting and them accepting you could do it as one I like how you did it as two because it's two separate sort of uh actions or situations but you could you if you want you could try it in one I love how you did it you did it for both of them that's kind of neat that's pretty yeah, cool just because I felt I felt the relief of submitting it yeah. but then the other anxiety started <laughs> Which was You're like, like, wait a minute, are they going to accept yeah, yeah. it or are they not? Mm -hmm. So I was like, mm, I'm not Very quite cool. there yet. Very cool. Awesome. I'm amazing. I'm glad it worked for you. I'm glad, glad. Asma, how did it work for you, my dear? Uh, I prefer to talk at the end. Sure. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Michelle, how about you? How about you? How'd it go? Um. Well, for me, it, it didn't really work, but oh. I mean... I wasn't really a hundred percent involved just because okay. I know I can feel the outcome of what stresses me. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's just living in la la land, you mm -hmm. know, which is great for me to be able to convince somebody else, whatever their problems are going on, but it's great to try to implicate it with what's going on also with your own stuff. Yeah. But uh, fortunately not for this one. Okay. I know we're just keep practicing. You're in the course anyways. We're going to learn this again in an expanded version and the background of why this works too, which will help also. This is kind of a crash course in the anxiety protocol. Keep, keep practicing, keep using it. Make sure it's a specific thing and a specific event too. That's where it works the best. Although I am curious uh, with Marty, because he did his imposter syndrome instead of a specific event or situation or, or you know, he was worried about in the future. Because uh, anxiety is about the future, guys. Anxiety is, as you know, fear of the future. Fear of uh, usually a future event or thing, whether it's money or tough talk or starting something or stopping something or hearing a yes or a no or thing a thing going well or a thing going bad. And usually, not usually, um, anxiety is a sign for us to pay attention. There's something we're not paying attention to and usually we're focusing on crap. If we're anxious, we're focusing on a crappy outcome for that event, thing, situation. So keep up, keep the work, Michelle. Keep practicing, keep practicing. Um, Marty, how did it go? Because you did a you did more of a general thing. It was it was imposter syndrome. Tell but tell us how it went. Well, okay, so imposter syndrome. So specifically, it's it's kind of like it's more like this. I'm in a coaching session with a client, mm -hmm. and they stump me. Right? Mm -hmm. They like throw stuff at me that I'm like, oh shit, I don't know what to, how to respond to this. I'm not sure how to help him with it. So, you know, cause I'm getting rolling now. I've been in that situation a few times. And so, yeah, it's, it, I get, it's, it's kind of that. So kind of imposter syndrome, but a little more specific than that. Got it. Okay. Got it. Got it. So what, what you could do um, for a specific event, you could do like your next client session or first client session, or if you have a, a client uh, that you think may stump you, or you know, is going to try to stump you, what I would do, I would do it uh, visualizing the successful completion of, of that very next upcoming client session. Uh, that again, the way it's specific and we're, we're hitting something specific, I think that'll work very, very well for you. So feel free to try again in a later time. Um, I think it'll work very, very well with, hey, my now my first client session, my next client session, the the very next one, I would do that um, with it and practice it. And I think you'll find it works well, it goes away. The other thing too, a, a quick tip for you guys, a quick tip for you all. Uh, if you don't know what to say, ask a question. I always say questions are the answer. And so again, ask them whether it's you with a, with a, with a student tutoring, guys, whether it's coaching, speaking, whatever it is, ask a question. Questions are the answer. And if you could always say, you know, that's a really great question just to give your brain some time. To, okay, what am I going to say? What should I say? That's a really good question. Again, it gives you a few seconds to kind of come up with something if you're not sure or if they stump you. And then you could say, what do you think you need to do? Or what do you think about this? What are your thoughts? What do you know you need to do that you're not doing in this case? Like if someone says to Marty, hey, Marty, what should I do when this happens? Or what do you what do you think about this? Well, that's a really good question. What do you think you should do? What is, because uh, you know you best, you know, Bob, you know, Jane, you know you best. What do you think you need to do? Or what do you know you need to do that if you did it would make you successful? And so you can put it back on them. Again, questions are the answer. And there, there's a lot of advanced ways to do it. That's a very simple way, although it's very effective as well. But you you probably know what you need to do. What what do you, you know, you could say, what are you resisting the most? 
that make you know make you successful? What are you resisting or procrastinating on or hesitating on the most? And I, I got a few things popping in my mind now um, that will, that you know make you really successful, or that you know will make you make this work for you, make this go your way. What you really need, I need to do this, or I need to start this, or stop that, or I need to be more whatever empathetic with my ex, for example. Or I need to be more whatever, whatever. Yeah, questions are the answer. So that way they can't stump you. You know, that's a really good question. What do you think you need to do? And what do you know you need to do that you haven't done yet? What have you wanted to do for so long that you haven't taken action on that'll probably make a big difference? All right. So try that. I think that'll help a lot. Yeah, great advice. Thanks, James. My pleasure, brother. You got it. You got it, Marty. Uh, and last but not least, Asma, what do you think? How did it work for you? Did it work well? Did it work a little bit? Did it work really well? Actually, it was the same as Michelle. I was surprised when Michelle talked. Got Maybe it. I have to think about it. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Yeah, yeah. So what was... And um, when there was it a very, very specific event you did, I mean, feel free to share just a, a, a detail or as vague as you want. It was it an event or a situation or a thing? Not that specific. It was about an event. Pardon but me. It, was a, it was a specific or wasn't a specific event? Was, no, it wasn't okay, specific. Okay, got it, got it. Yeah, so so this this doesn't, it's not, very, it's not as effective for general, let's say general anxiety, fear, worry. It needs to be about your fear about a specific thing, like an upcoming, um, like your, your first you know, tutoring client or your first, uh, probably, like I said, do some presentations on Zoom to parents or kids. Maybe you're, you're nervous about your first one or your first client or, or tough tech at work, getting a raise, getting a promotion, asking for more money, asking for vacation, whatever it is. Um, it needs to be a specific event. And then you, you can use this over and over again for specific events, things that are, are causing nervousness, anxiety. But it, it doesn't work as well, this one, for just general anxiety or, or general things as well. Um, it, can, it, can, it can work for specific instances of a general thing. Again, like Marty said, imposter syndrome. Uh, maybe he gets it, you know, the first several times or first few times until he gets, you know, gets good in practice at meeting his new client. So he can use that on that specific client meeting, you know, Friday at five. He can use that visualizing the successful completion of that client meeting at five, he hasn't stopped them. He said, you know, someone asked him something. That's a great question. What do you think is best for you? What do you know you need to do that you haven't done yet, that you've been hesitating? Whatever it is. Visualizing the success completion of that upcoming event or the next situation that has to deal with, for example, imposter syndrome, self-doubt, uh, worry, fear about not being good enough, fear not being accepted. It, what is the ne very next situation or event um where you're, you're you're nervous about that happening that would be my suggestion that the tool is very 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 good uh for specific events specific situations to do with a general topic like anxiety or imposter syndrome but you're going to want to nip in the bud or nuke those very very specific ones awesome great learning space great learning no failure on the feedback guys you had the practice now you can do it again with a specific event i think you'll get even more practice um, any questions so far, anything you want to discuss? Because what I think I'll do is uh, I think I will leave you with a really cool non-sleep deep rest session, get you guys a bit of rest and give you a bit more energy, have you be more calm and present for the day, unless there's any specific questions or specific things you need, thoughts, advice, something bothering you, challenges, feel free to put your top challenges there in chat. If you have time for it, I'm certainly happy to teach a protocol or we can give you feedback from each other. As well, guys, we talked about a few things, copy test. We talked about, um, uh, we talked about a good copy test, listening, paying attention, uh, nipping anxiety in the bud, right? So we're going to do a cool non-sleep deep rest meditation. It's about 10 minutes long. Um, yeah. Actually, this one's 20. I just want 20 in fact, actually, at the time. Um, but if you have to drop off partway, feel free, but this one's about 20 minutes. I'll put on it's amazing. You'll feel rested. You feel relaxed. You feel more energetic and more calm and more peaceful as well. Is there any questions? Does anyone want to discuss anything? I get feedback on it. If you want ideas for your business or ideas how to, I, I don't know, ask them how to market your your tutoring business, how to start it. Marty, how to market what you do. Uh, and Carol, again, marketing. And Michelle, what you do. The, the having inner and outer beauty. You know, get together with Michelle once or twice a month. We're talking about having inner and outer beauty and how to have that. Uh, you can teach some of the tools, Michelle, you're learning in the course, answer questions for people. Um, what do you guys need? This guy, this, this, sorry, this, 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 this is as much for you as it is me teaching. It's not the James show. It's about you. And Carol, go ahead. Okay. So 
we have a social media and mm -hmm. people like our social media, but when we ask for donations, <laughs> that's when people, mm, that that's it, right? It just goes there. And for example, at some point we wanted to raise money for, to build a house for a lady that she does a lot for the environment because she, she does recycling without paying. Like she doesn't get paid for this. She gets sometimes remuneration when they have, but it's a whole issue. Like the, the recycling company or whatever, they don't even get paid sometimes. So she doesn't even get paid at all. Huh. But she just does it because, I don't know, I don't know. She just does it, right? Huh. Uh, and her house was falling down and all these things. So we took pictures and videos. And then I tell people in here and I tell people everywhere and online. And they all say, like, 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 like. But when it's time to give money, they don't. And so I, I get really frustrated and pissed off at people mm -hmm. that they mm -hmm. come to me and say, oh, you're doing so good. That is a good cause. Uh, it's amazing what you do and all these things, but they don't give, like, I can't just build a house with nothing. So I really need something. So yeah. how do you do? To be, <laughs> so Got people it. can actually give back in yeah. the way that you need it. I mean, I am grateful for the support in, yeah. in the words and, and all that, but I, I actually need the money. Fair. Sorry, I mean, you can't build a house with Facebook likes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what do you guys think? Uh, Asma, Marty, Michelle, you, you, we, this is cool. We have people from Canada, people from uh, Abu Dhabi, and the United Arab Emirates. We have Marty from uh, California. Really cool. What do you guys think? Any suggestions for Carol in terms of if, if something has compelled you to donate in the past or not, or what she's saying? Any thoughts, guys? Mm -hmm. Any thoughts? What could be preventing people? How should you be more engaging? Again, because she's 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 showing, hey, this is a situation. These are the pictures, these are the videos, this our house is falling apart. Any thoughts? What I would say is you really gotta appeal to people's inner motivation and, and their inner why. Um and fair, Michelle's got a really good point too. There are so many scams happening. People scared. Yes, scared. Info and credit cards will be sold. Or are we, am I, is this charity legit? Um, and that's a valid point. That's a valid point. In in, I think one of the one of the things is. And here I'll I'll, I'll this is actually an interesting prelude into the fourteen keys. We can talk about this next time too. Mm -hmm. to persuasion and influence. Um, but it, it's really wanting to appeal to people's why. Uh, you want to really, really appear, appeal, excuse me, to their big motivation and what the motivation is and, and, and figure, yeah, you need to figure that out. What is people's big motivation? Uh, someone may like the fact that you're, you're saving the marine environment. However, um, let's say for me, I'm a scuba diving. Marty, do you dive, by the way? Remember, are you a diver? Yeah, you're a diver too. That's right, I thought so. Um, so again, if you appeal maybe to to, to specific people, like like let's say divers, um, hey guys, I need your help. Um, you know, the, the, the and I've seen it, I'm sure Marty's seen it too. The undersea world is getting decimated. Corals are getting bleached. People are, are picking corals or destroying them or the, the pollution, um, the, the overfishing, the nets, the traps, the whatever, destroying the reefs. Um, pollution is destroying the reefs, um, and it's it's ruining the environment for scuba divers. It's ruining this beautiful, pristine environment for for divers and for future divers to explore. And and I, someone like me and Marty would be like, "Holy crap! It's going to ruin." That's 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 horrible. Like, because something we really genuinely care about uh, that you're appealing to versus a general, "Hey guys, let let's help, let's help, and we'll help the whatever, right? Help the children, help the world, help the corals, help the fish." Um, marine ecosystem, you're appealing to a, a specific, um, I, guess, I guess, passion of mine and, and Marty's, which is diving and exploring. Um, and you're also stating, hey, you know, is this important to you that future generations will be able to also dive and explore and, and see the marine environment? Or, you know, are you happy with them seeing a bunch of white rubble 
And it, it's broken my heart sometimes going diving and seeing really reefs decimated, it's just white rubble, it's bones of, of, of coral reefs. It's just heartbreaking. So you may need to uh, have have one day you you when you ask, you appeal to certain people, like let's say divers or marine conservationists or snorkelers. Uh, when do you may need to appeal to someone else that's someone specific? Uh, specificity works really well because uh, you can really hit on their challenges, their pains, their goals, and their passions versus, hey, guys, let's save the elephants, save the ocean, save the children. Um, like, let's say you're trying to save the elephants. Um, perhaps you could appeal to tourists or people who want to go see wild elephants and, and, and you know, take care of elephants for a day or three, like that. It was super cool. Um, and you can appeal maybe to the travelers or the naturalists or the backpackers that want to see uh, elephants taken care of and not seeing elephants, you know, tortured or chained down and be able to, I don't know, see elephants and, and take care of elephants and get, you know, uh, whatever rides. I know it's not always totally uh, kosher, but rides from elephants, but you can appeal in specific ways. It may, may be better um, and, and sharing things as well and or sharing the results of, yeah, we build our house. Great. But some of the people aren't connecting. Can we build this lady house? This is great recycling. Maybe doing also better in Carol to connect it with uh, the, the 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 bigger why. Okay, I give money. This lady, do I don't know her? Yeah, she's doing good things. She's recycling. That's that's cool. Do I, I, I do I want to buy her house or pay for her house, for example? Well, maybe. But you can say, hey, this lady is keeping you know one ten million metric tons of of crap out of the out of the oceans, uh, out of the oceans and rivers and lakes uh, every single year. Um, otherwise, you know, things would look like this. You show a picture, you show pictures of a house, but maybe show pictures of, of the, the, Hey, we clean this lake up. She cleaned this lake up. Look, it went from this to this. If you do, if you donate to help her house, then we're going to take a lake or river or ocean from this to this. Um, so you can show kind of the end goal, I think would help because people are probably more, I'm more passionate about, yes, I, I can, I, I can connect someone's, okay. You know, I help her with her house and recycling and there's less crap ending up in the ocean. Maybe not everyone can. So maybe show the end goal. Hey guys, support us helping this lady with recycling. That way we can turn the rivers and oceans from this crap and it's horrible, like, oh my God, to this. And it's a showing where, where some place has been cleaned up and it's been restored to natural beauty. Um, those are two of my suggestions. Go, go more specific, appeal to specific people with specific passions and, and change it up every time you, you do a post or ask for donation. And again, show the end result. You need donations to this lady's house because it'll help like a before, like a before after picture, right? We need donations to my uh, free fat loss uh, foundation. That way people can go from this, an obese person to this, a fit person. Wow. And, and people kind of see the results, if you will, in advance of their money, that they see what their money is going to do and where it's going to go. That would be a couple suggestions. There's many, many suggestions, a couple suggestions for you. Um, there's also a really good book, guys. It's called Switch. Anyone read the book Switch here? One of my favorite books. Switch. Um, really good book. And, and it talks a lot about what I talk about uh, in not uh, books, books, books. There it is. Like the lights are literally a bit of a light switch. Uh, how to change things when change is hard. Really interesting book, guys, for mentors, coaches, anyone trying to motivate someone. Super, there's an audible book, there's a, a paperback book. Uh, super interesting. And it can it, it, it's shown and they've done research and case studies on how people how, how they've done the research. They've done the research um, and, and and tested different things and seen what's created change, what's created results. Excuse me. What's had people stop doing something and or start doing something? Um, and it talks about the rider, which is the conscious mind. Talks about the elephant, direct the path, it direct, you know, which is changing the environment. Um, uh, there's another another uh, metaphor they use, but it's basically appeal to people's conscious minds, unconscious minds, and and set up the environment for success, make it easy for success, and or for them to essentially do what you want. Super interesting book, very valuable book, guys. Um, yeah, really, really interesting book. I, I loved it uh, a lot. So that might help all of you, in fact, to like, do what you do better. Um, this is Marty in the chat, too. Thank you, Marty. He put a great, great thing in the chat as well, uh, where he was saying, 
different ways to focus on the market. And he's asking about needing a strategy. What should I focus on? Uh, podcast, email list, Facebook. I'm gonna okay, well, I'll put this in the main, in the main uh so go. Put that in the main thing here as well. Okay, so marketing. So and, and right, there is many, many different ways to to market. Um people say that ideally you want slightly different things and tweaked content for each platform, whether it's LinkedIn, Facebook, Insta, uh, you know, TikTok, etc. Um, my most of my content is the same or similar, uh, especially when you're just starting out. And if you don't have a social media outreach manager like myself, it, it's it's super super easy to just literally create a post, create a, a, a reel, and alternate. Use 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 uh, video and uh, written stuff. And just blast it to everything. Uh, I would do it manually instead of using those tools that do it automatically. Um, they don't seem to work as well. Your po your, you'll notice your post reach is not nearly as good as if you do it manually. So again, record a video. I love shorts because you can upload it to YouTube. YouTube, remember, is the biggest, Marty and all, is the second biggest search engine in the world. And I actually find it a little annoying now when I Google search something, usually the top results are videos. I'm like, I don't watch a video. I just want a quick little... A little blurb tell me how to do it so it's actually annoying me but again youtube is the second biggest search engine in the world so you can even ask them for some of your uh you know your, your content or things you're doing to promote yourself create legitimacy credibility authority as you as a, a tutor and why people should send people to you and pay you a lot more money than they pay other people which is the key um again having some content there having things whether it's a post uh whether it's a, a story on facebook by the way stories on facebook work the best uh reels on instagram work the best and then your general and again just videos and shorts on youtube get the most uh reach uh, you can also do posts on linkedin and facebook uh, i find posts on linkedin seem to be too better uh, posts and short stories which is just a video on facebook do pretty well for some reason linkedin i would say my my written posts do far better than my videos which is interesting i guess when people are scrolling along and they're at work they don't want to watch or see a video they just want to read something who for thought um but to answer answer your question specifically marty uh, i would do all of these you don't have to do them all at the same time and you can really focus on one half where do you think your most of your people are you could focus on that. And if, if you're not getting engagement, you could switch. Or you could, again, literally copy this all over to Facebook if you post on LinkedIn or vice versa and test different things. See where you get the most engagement. You, you'll find out very quickly if you post to all of these, you find out very quickly where you get the most engagement. That's why I post to all of these. That's why I do. Uh, yep. YouTube shorts, LinkedIn posts, Facebook stories, Instagram reels, and yeah, you can TikTok videos. Yeah, that's the, that's the best thing to do as well. Uh, Facebook posts also work well, guys. Also, Facebook posts work quite well, as a matter of fact, too. And I would alternate. Um, there's also, guys, evidence uh, I've seen that if you post once a week, you'll get you know decent, decent hits, decent views. If you post uh, at least three, if not five or more times a week, it could be just a short little thing. Your your results and your reach will go up and up and up and up. Uh, the algorithms love when you post frequently. It be short, simple. So break a big post down into shorter ones if you want. Um, break a big video down into sh two shorts and then have the bigger video, sure. And have the bigger post, yeah. And you could tell people, hey, if you'd like this, go check out the longer post. If you'd like this short, go check out the video on the other five secrets or the other four tips I have. Um, you can do that as well. Um, you can you can a podcast as well. Honestly, if you do a, a Facebook Live, lives are great as well. Lives are incredible too. Lives rank really well. Um, and if you, if you have a live, you do, let's say Facebook, uh, you can cut that up into shorts if you want to, you could, excuse me, you could cut, pardon me, but I'm sorry. You can you cut that up into shorts as well. Um, and the video, any videos you do, uh, a short may not be worth uploading as a podcast. 60 seconds is a little short for a podcast, but any lives or videos you do, like I do, if I do a live video. In fact, Marty, uh, in fact, all of you, in fact, I'd love to have you on my video show, which also goes to my podcast on Anchor. It's free. Anchor is free. And it goes to um, Spotify, uh, iTunes. It goes to, I think, Twitter, a couple other ones I forget. And it also goes to Apple, uh, uh, Apple and Google and Google Play as well. Google Play podcasts. 
So anyways, you can you can recycle the same thing and put it everywhere. It doesn't take very long, guys. When you get in the groove, I can do it in about five, six minutes, including tagging. Um, doesn't take, maybe 10. Uh, so it doesn't take very long at all. And I would say, and it depends on your group party too and all. Uh, it depends on your group. What is the, where people mostly hang out? Podcasts are great. Uh, email lists are great as well. Email lists are good because you're building your own content and you're building your own list versus if Facebook locks you out or if Instagram shuts you down and deletes your account like they did to me because someone hacked it, uh, you don't lose everything. You have your email list. You always have, back it up, whatever software you use, back it up, you always have your email list. So that's the good news behind that. So I, I would do all of them. You don't have to do all of them at once even though a lot of your stuff can be repurposed very, very easily, very easy. Um, in all your posts, yes, you can you can ask to say, um, you can alternate. I would alternate, Marty. Facebook groups are great for nurturing. I haven't monetized mine as good as I wanted yet, but again, until recently, I hadn't really done a lot with it. A Facebook group, again, for, let's say, for students asthma or parents or both. I can work really well for you as well, showing and you know authenticity, showing credibility, authority as well. And well, you know, we got to send our kids to asthma. Or hey, mom, can I work with asthma? She teaches this and she gives this, and she'll answer a short math question. Uh, you know, for some people, just like I'm doing now, I'm answering some questions now. She'll do that, and they see value. Um, Facebook groups can be a great way to nurture people. And in your social media posting, guys, in all your posts, what you can do is. Uh, every, you know, every uh, two to five posts, you know, uh, videos, whatever. You can invite people to join your Facebook group or you can uh, invite, you can say, uh, if you liked this, whatever the this is, um, go check out my, whatever, my, my, my thing. Whether it's a video, my my check out my my um uh, my masterclass or video or ebook on you know X Y Z. You know if you liked if you liked the, the the first tip, you're gonna love the other five, and go check it out. And that way, and you'll you'll you usually have this gated, which means they have to give their you know with email and name. Um, have it gated that way you generate and build your email list automatically just by having social media and a lot of these email list systems like uh, aweber mailchimp even zoho they have free options too so it doesn't cost anything you know every every few you know hey and remind guys join my uh, join my master class or join my facebook group for whatever and, and give them why for uh tips uh resourcing networking and I don't support something like that. Give them the why. Why, why the hell should they join your, join your group? Um, and then every once in a while you could do a, a book a call with me. Most people are not ready for that yet. If they are great, they'll do it. You know, use something like Calendly, it's free. And Calendly will integrate with your main like iCal or Google Calendar. If anyone needs any coaching on this, by the way, I, I am clearly all <laughs> on the up and up and all this stuff, happy to support however I can. Um, but that, that would be my feedback uh, to you, Marty. I would, I would use all of them, avoid letting it overwhelm you. The good news is just, you could just repurpose that one video, that one post, repurpose it, you know, LinkedIn, Facebook um, as well. Obviously, it's a video. You can also go to YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok as well. And you can alternate. One day, do a video or two, or a couple of days, do a video. And one day, maybe do a, a written post. I prefer videos. I do need to do a little more written posts. Um, so that that's my my thoughts. And again, any, any of the longer form videos you do can be uploaded to a podcast uh, as well. Um, who for thought? Uh, podcasts. I'm happy to be your first, you know, interviewee or first conversation on your podcast. Please, guys, everyone, uh, Asma, Marty, Carol, 
Michelle, everyone, I'd love to have you on my podcast too. It's, it goes live. It's live to LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. Am I missing anything else? Um, and YouTube. And then it also, I, I save the file and I upload it to, again, Anchor, which will blast it out to iTunes and, and all this stuff. It'll blast it out for you. So it makes it very easy to do all of this uh, at once, essentially, or make or do all this. My answer is yes, Marty. You don't have to do it all at once. However, it is very easy to do that. And I'm happy to show you. Uh, it's quite easy to do that on some other. Um, it's just, you know, repurposing the same thing versus having a million things, a million places. Just for now, repurpose the same thing. People say, yo, you should talk on LinkedIn, a little bit of different tone than you should talk on Facebook. <clears throat> My advice, and it works, is talk to me like a friend. Talk to them like you're talking to a friend. Versus being too professional on LinkedIn or, or too casual on Facebook. Be you, be authentically you, talk to them like a friend and be authentic. That is what will sell versus all. Oh, be more professional on Facebook, be more or be more professional on LinkedIn, excuse me, more friendly on Facebook, more fun on TikTok. Just be you, be authentically you on all. And that's what's going to resonate best on all of them, in my opinion. Okay. Uh, any any other questions, guys? Any other? And again, like, like you said, Marty, and like I, I told you guys earlier, shorts on YouTube, uh, you can have a longer thing that your shorts push people to or or do a longer thing at the live and, and, and then cut it up into shorts and have the shorts push you along as well. That's key too. Uh, yeah, LinkedIn posts. You can try video, see if it works for you. Uh, Facebook stories, Instagram reels, and TikTok videos is what works best. Any other questions, guys? We're coming up to the end of the hour and a half. Any other questions, concerns, something you want feedback on? Cool, 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 cool. Awesome, awesome. Hope you got value, guys, at it today. Hope you liked today. Uh, use the tools. Uh, use the tools, again, and, and use it on something specific. If it's something general, use it on a specific event. If it's self-doubt, imposter syndrome, um, anxiety, Use it on a future, uh, specific future situation that you are anxious or nervous about. Again, Marty, you like to maybe this next, the next client appointment, a very nice client appointment you have. If you're, if you're imposter syndrome, because what do I say? Am I going to be stumped? Just use it on that one. And then if you have it again for the next one, use it on the next one. And if that happens, it is coming up for the next one. Use it on the next one. That's my thoughts. And, and ditto for you, Asma and Michelle as well. Cool, cool. Hope this is fun, guys. Hope you learned some things as well. And yeah, feel free. If you guys want to network with each other? Feel free to drop your emails in the chat or your LinkedIn in the chat as well. If you'd like to network, connect as well. You guys being coaches, mentors, and of course tutors, heck, and might be uh, of use to support each other to network to connect. So if you want to do that, feel free to drop your information in the chats if anyone wants to connect with anyone. And I guess that's it. We're done for the day. Oh, I was going to do. I guess we ran out of time. Clearly for the meditation. Uh, we'll do that next time. Come back next time in two weeks, guys. Next time it's happening on the 26th of October. Uh, we will, I promise, uh, do the uh, the meditation. We will do that for you guys. We'll do the yoga nidra, uh, 20 minutes to rest, to relax, to chill, and to be more empowered, have more energy in your day. And you can use it for falling asleep too. If you need to. Cool. All right, guys. Uh, it's been a slice. Any last questions, comments? What was... And give me give me one word, guys. Before we part, give me one word that kind of represents anything you got or learned uh, out of today. One word. What's coming up? One word. I got two words. Mine to be fun and service. Say again. Be good. Say again. That's fine. Uh, to be a good listener. Yeah, right on. Right on. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. That'll that'll have you stand out amongst millions. Amazing, amazing, amazing. I enjoyed it as well. I enjoyed it as well. And and fair, time does fly. You should watch the, the courses, uh, the four hours. I can ask Michelle and ask uh, Carol. Courses evaporate. Oh, does anyone have a quick question for Michelle or Carol about the course just while we're here? Anyone, they love it, they hate it. If, if What they're getting out of it? Do they like me? Do they not like me? Anyone have a quick question? Ask them on behalf, on behalf of your uh, your boyfriend or Marty for yourself. Any, anything you want to know? I'm sure the guys would be happy. Oh, do you love it or do you hate it? Am I good or not? Be honest. <laughs> so far, so good. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Beautiful. I really like it. It's very inspiring and it gives me positive vibes to keep going. So, yes, I do. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Amazing. Amazing. Well, there we go. There we go.
Uh, any questions for you, but that's not for yourself or on behalf of, uh, of your boyfriend at all. I got my answers. Beautiful. Oh, excellent. I'm glad. I'm so glad. Beautiful. 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 Thank you for your compliment and comment in the chat, Asma, as well. Uh, it's been a pleasure being of service, guys, as well for you. Marty, what would be a word? Just one or two words, um, things today represent what you got, what you thought. Uh, well, definitely, I couldn't really sum it up in one word, but definitely the advice you gave about um, uh, sort of asking questions, sort of putting it back on the client. That's a, that's a, that's a good one. Awesome, awesome. And last but not least, I'm Carol. Strategies for a lot of things. Cool. Amazing. amazing, guys. Amazing, amazing. Cool. Uh, well, fly be free, guys. This has been a pleasure to be of service. Thank you as well. And uh, looking forward to continuing serving. Uh, again, this happens every two weeks, guys. Come back, learn more, ask more, bring up more stuff. There's lots more tools I'll teach. And I will do the non-sleep deep rest meditation next week as well for you, okay? Have an amazing weekend, guys. Talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye, James. You guys take care.